Good morning everyone. Let us start. Remember, revision is going on for chapter 2, Physical Features of India. We have already discussed about the Himalayan mountains, the northern plains, and today we shall discuss about the peninsular plateau. Now I shall present. So this is the third major physiographic division of India that is the peninsular plateau. So let us read the peninsular plateau is a table lane composed of old crystalline igneous and metamorphic rocks. Okay, a table lane you know this is a flat high lane. Okay. It refers to uh, a plateau. Say, for example, uh, here, see, just like this. So, such type of flat high lane is known as a table lane, a plateau. Okay. And this peninsular plateau. Uh, is composed of old crystalline, very old rocks, more than sometimes 250 million years old, and very hard igneous and metamorphic rocks. Okay, so you have already learned uh, what are igneous rocks, what are metamorphic rocks. Igneous rocks are the rocks formed by cooling uh, this uh, molten uh, magma or lava. Okay, it may be formed inside the earth or on the surface of the earth. And for your reference, uh, we have uh, some examples of igneous rocks here. Okay, like uh, granite, diorite, gabbro, basalt, andesite, rhyolite. So these are some examples of igneous rocks. And Metamorphic rocks, you know, so these are transformed rocks actually when uh, igneous or sedimentary uh, or another type of uh, rocks are under high pressure and temperature. Okay, uh, the internal structure of the rock is changed and uh, form another type of rock that is known as metamorphic rock and we have some examples of metamorphic rocks here. Niche, slate, quartzite, skis, marble, uh, phyllite. Okay, so these are some examples of metamorphic rocks, and uh, some more are here. The most common one uh, okay, we find is slate, then skis, niche, then marble. These are very common. Okay, uh, types of metamorphic rocks. Any question, boys? clear actually uh, these metamorphic rocks are formed see this is the surface and uh, when a rock is buried in the earth interior then due to pressure okay due to the weight of the rocks and the soils above this rock exerts a great pressure and a temperature and that is why uh, this rock is changed to another type of rock and that is known as metamorphic rocks. Okay. So let us continue if you don't have questions. It was formed due to the breaking and the drifting of the Guantanamo lane and thus making it a part of the oldest landmass. That means the peninsular plateau was formed due to the breaking and the drifting of the Guantanamo lane and thus making it a part of the oldest landmass okay in the world actually you see here see this diagram you must know that uh, about 225 uh, million years ago 
okay there was only one uh, continent that is known as Pangea okay and there was only one ocean that was known as Pantalassa and in due course of time uh, this big continent known as Pangea was broken into a smaller pieces and move in different ways okay so one may be moving to this side and this may be moving to this side okay and this also moving towards the west so in this way this is india okay india is also moving towards the uh, north uh, okay so due to the northward drifting of the uh, this landmass okay towards the uh, towards the north as you see here this is the position uh, in 150 million years ago so this indian subcontinent is moving okay had been moving towards the north and here 100 million years ago it is india is south of equator but still it it had been moving okay and uh, now this is the present position of india okay that is holocene so in this way, uh, this uh, landmass had been moving towards the north, okay, and uh, and thus the the present peninsular plateau had been formed. And remember, this big landmass known as Pangea, okay, was broken into two uh, pieces about 150 million years ago the landmass north of the equator was known as laurasia and uh, the landmass south of the equator was known as gondwana land okay here we have equator and uh, india was a part of the uh, this gondwana land and due to the drifting of this uh, gondwana land towards the north okay the peninsular plateau had been formed and the dust making the oldest landmass okay so this is about the origin of the uh, indian landmass that is the peninsular plateau the plateau has a broad and uh, shallow valleys and uh, rounded hills so about the relief of the plateau okay of the peninsular plateau it has a broad and a shallow valleys the river valleys are broad and a shallow okay uh, here the river valleys are broad like this and uh, a shallow so this is uh, an example okay a typical uh, type of uh, these uh, valleys river valleys and uh, the mountains most, most of the mountains have rounded okay hills like this not pointed just like the Himalayan Himalayan have pointed hills and mountains and Himalayans uh, Himalayan region have uh, these V7 valleys like this but the peninsular plateau has rounded hills like this and uh, shallow and the flat bottom river valleys like this the plateau consists of two broad divisions namely the central highlands and the Deccan plateau so the peninsular plateau can be divided into two divisions central highland and the deccan plateau let us see this is a physical map of india okay map showing relief features india and here we have uh, this narmada river okay and uh, so this plateau north of narmada river is known as the central highland and uh, the plateau south of the Narmada river here is known as the Deccan plateau okay so this is Deccan plateau and this is the central highland and the part of the peninsular plateau lying north of the Narmada river covering major area of the Malwa plateau is known as the central highland as I pointed to you earlier, okay, that uh, this part, this part of the peninsular plateau 
north of the Narmada river see this is the Narmada river okay this part of the plateau north of the Narmada river uh, is known as the central highland okay so I may type so this is what this is known as central highlands okay so the Bindan range is bounded by Satpura range on the north and the Aravalis in the northwest the further east west west extension gradually merges with the sandy and the rocky desert of Rajasthan. Okay, so Bindan range lies here in this uh, region. Okay, the Bindan range is bounded by Satpura range in the, on the south and Aravalis in the northwest. Just see this map here. Uh, here we have the Bindan range. Okay, this is the Bindan range. And the south of Bindan Range, we have Satpura Range. As you see here, this is Satpura Range. Okay. Uh, between this Narmada River and the Tapti River, we have the Satpura Range. And here in the northwest of the plateau, we have the Aravali Mountain Range. So this is the Aravali Mountain Range. And after that, uh, the Peninsula Plateau is gradually merged into the Indian Desert. Okay. Into the sandy uh, desert of Rajasthan okay and uh, the flow of rivers draining this region namely uh, the Sambal, the Sin and uh, the Batwa and the Kain is from southwest to northeast thus indicating the slope so the major rivers flowing in this area in this region that is the central highland are the Sambal, then Sin, Batwa, Kain. Okay, and these rivers are flowing from southwest to the uh, northeast. As you see here, okay, we may see another map. As you see here, so these are the important, let us say, yeah, this section is the central highland. And uh, major rivers flowing in this area are the Sambal River, okay, then Batwa, then other smaller rivers are here flowing here, okay. And these rivers are originating from southwest and is flowing towards the northeast, like this, okay, from southwest towards the northeast. So, you know, the direction of flow river tells the direction of the slope of the lane. You must know that the central highlands are wider in the west but narrower in the east. So one point you have to know is that these central highlands, the plateau north of the Narmada river is wider in the west and it is narrower in the east. Just see here. Uh, if I draw the boundary, okay, just see here. So here this is the central highland and uh, so this is the eastern portion. That means uh, here the central highland is wider in the west. Okay. And it is narrower here. As you see here it is narrower here in the east. Okay. So that is the point written here. The eastward extension of this plateau are locally known as the Bandel Khan and the Vagel Khan. Okay, and uh, the Sotanapur Plateau marks the further eastward extension drained by the Muda River. That means uh, the central highlands can be divided into uh, three divisions. Okay, I uh, see here. Uh, the plateau okay the plateau uh, this uh, west of the central highland here in this area is known as the malwa plateau and next we have uh, this section okay in the middle we have bandel khan and the vagel khan and in the east we have swatanapur plateau 
okay so uh, again let me tell you the central highland may be divided into three divisions and the plateau uh, in the west is known as the Malwa plateau and uh, the highland in the center okay in the central part is known as the Bandel Khan or Bagel Khan and uh, the plateau in the east okay is known as the Sotanapo plateau and here the main river flowing here is the Damodar river okay in the Sotanapo plateau any question boys okay then let us continue if you don't have questions then the Deccan plateau is a triangular landmass that lies south of river Narmada so we have already seen the location okay uh, just see here so this is the Deccan plateau and the uh, Deccan plateau is a triangular landmass which is lying south of the Narmada river okay so this is the Deccan plateau Narmada river as I told you is here okay Narmada river is here and it, it is triangular in shape and you know the word Deccan means south and uh, the Satpura rains flank it broad base in the north while Mahadev then Kaimuri hills and uh, Michael rains uh, form its eastern extensions that means uh, these are the hills forming the boundary of uh, this Deccan plateau so north of the Deccan plateau we have Satpura rains okay the complete two is here north of the Satpura uh, sorry the complete two we have Satpura range Satpura range is here okay then we have Mahadeo hills and other hills are also here those hills mentioned here in the book are here okay uh, that is uh, Satpura in the north then Mahadev Kaimur Michael range in the east okay so you may look at these hills uh, using an atlas the Deccan plateau is higher in the west and slopes gently eastwards this Deccan plateau okay this section Deccan plateau is higher in the west like this okay it is higher in the west uh, like this so it is higher in the west uh, that means it is sloping towards the east okay and here we have the Arabian Sea and uh, we have the Bay of Bengal here and eastward uh, an extension of the plateau is also available is also visible in the northeast locally known as the Meghalaya Karvi Anglong plateau and the North Kasar hills it is separated by a fault from Sotanapu Plateau. Okay, actually here uh, when we see this uh, map, okay, see here. Uh, this section, okay, so this plateau, locally known as Meghalaya Plateau or Silong Plateau, uh, was also a part of the uh, Deccan Plateau sorry uh, this peninsula plateau okay this uh, plateau in the northeast that is uh, locally known as the Meghalaya plateau or the Silong plateau was a part of the peninsula plateau so it was separated by a fault okay see here this section this section uh, the lane between the Sotanapur plateau here here we have Sotanapur plateau the lane between the Sotanopo Plateau and the Silong Plateau was uh, subsided. Okay, this section was subsided. As you see here, let us say uh, this is the former uh, land surface. Okay, these are the different formations. And uh, see, this is the topmost formation, topmost layer and uh, this is the next layer next formation and uh, this is the uh, third 
formation and uh, due to the tensional forces one forces may be going to this side another may be to this side and uh, hence this section may be subsided okay it is uh, in this way the lane has been uh, subsided here so this is the topmost layer see this is the topmost layer and the topmost layer comes here and this is the second formation the second formation comes here and so on okay so in this way uh, this section has been subsided due to tectonic forces and so such type of uh, this uh, subsidence this type of process is known as what is known as faulting okay this is known as faulting the process is known as faulting and uh, since uh, this action has been uh, faulted okay so we have uh, got a low-lying area here forming Bangladesh area West Bengal area the separating the uh, Silong plateau from the peninsular plateau and uh, this area this uh, faulted area is known as malda fault okay this section is known as malda fault remember once uh, this uh, chotanagar plateau and uh, silong plateau was connected okay but due to this uh, malda fault due to the subsidence of uh, this area Bangladesh and West Bengal area okay the Shillong plateau has been uh, separated from the this peninsular plateau that is the point mentioned in our book okay see here it is separated by a fault from the Sotanapo plateau that is the Shillong plateau or the Meghalaya plateau together with the Karbi Anglong and the North Kasha hills had been separated from the Sotanapo plateau by a fault and here uh, in this plateau section we have three prominent hill ranges from west to the east those are the garo the kashi and the zante hills as you find here okay Let's see here just see here so here in the meghalaya plateau you'll find uh, these three important hill ranges from west to the east here we have uh, Garo next we have Kashi okay and here in the east we have Zaintia hills so these are the three important hill ranges in the Meghalaya plateau okay so any question Any question? Okay, if you don't have uh, questions, then uh, let us stop here for today. Thank you all.